Hello and welcome back on our Italian road trip. We're leaving the Naples area and we are headed up to Tor Bionica. That is a little town on the beach and that's where we like to stay. So we are going to stay on the coast and then head into Rome. I'll tell you exactly how we're headed to Rome so that you can use some of our tips and tricks, whether you drive there or take public transportation. But first we'll start with a beautiful morning view of the water from our Airbnb. So we're on a road trip because I love to drive, but I do not love to drive in busy cities like Rome. So I drove about a half hour to Laurentina. We parked and we got on the Metro because that's the farthest out station that you can stop at. If you plan on driving the Metro all day, then you can get a day pass or you could even get more than one day pass. But since we were planning on driving the Metro in the morning into Rome and in the evening out, we just got a 90 minute pass. So we were able to use that ticket and then we were planning on taking the hop on hop off bus. I'll talk a little bit more about that later, whether I recommend it or not, but I just wanted to show you the kids um, were getting our tickets here at the machine, which is right at the Metro station. The turnstiles at Italian metros are much like the ones in the rest of Europe, so it wasn't very hard to get going. We do try to rush through the gate when we go because it is meant to close very quickly behind you and we did not want it to close on us. The metro can be very full, but we prefer it to buses because you do not have to worry about traffic. The metros are very punctual and come very often, so you don't have to wait long for the next train to come. This was a fun single service bathroom where you put your money in, you step inside, do your business and step out, automatic doors and all. So again, we got on the Metro at Laurentina and we got off at Colosseo because that is the Colosseum stop. And I love how when you exit the Metro, you step right out and see the Colosseum huge in front of you. It's such a surreal experience. So on our first trip to Rome, we decided to do the hop on hop off bus. You can, there will be people everywhere trying to sell you tickets to the hop on hop off bus. It is a great experience in that you can get on and you hear about the places that you're passing because you have a little set of headphones that they give you. You can hop on and hop off at many different places. This was kind of a fun experience because this huge bus had to slowly go down some of these alleys because there were cars on either side and it was a very tight fit as you see. Most of the time, however, the bus is fighting traffic and it takes a very long time to get places and a lot of time waiting on the bus. So if you want to see as much as possible, the bus might not be the thing for you. Unless of course your goal is to see the outside of as many landmarks as you can, in which case it might be a good choice for you. All right, so let's talk a little bit more about the Colosseum. We have gone to the Colosseum three times now. It's a great trip. It's fun to go inside. You see right here the art of Constantine that was built in 312 AD for the Emperor Constantine. Over there you see the Roman Forum. We're going to get over there in just a minute so you can see that. But here I wanted to show you a little bit of the architecture that they are fixing on the Colosseum. They're doing a really good job and it's really cool to see them keeping it up and not letting it disintegrate. Make sure to get your tickets as far in advance as absolutely possible because they do sell out and also uh, remember that you will be going through metal detectors. Don't bring anything that could be dangerous. You will have the opportunity to get um, a tour guide out front if you would like or choose one beforehand. They also have audio tour headsets that you can rent when you walk through the front door. Here I'm showing you the meeting point, which is where we met to go on the underground um, tour, which was super cool. If you would like to see the underground tour, I definitely recommend that you check out one of our previous videos. It was actually the video we dropped last week um, and it gives clips of this tour. It's actually an hour and a half tour. It's just something that definitely sells out. You need to book as far in advance as possible. With just a regular admission, you still get a great look around the Colosseum. Right now we're standing on the floor that they built, looking out over and up. This floor looks out over the underground. They show you what the trapdoors might have looked like for their elevators, for the shows. You look up and you see that it's in pretty bad repair, but I mean, it is, it was built in 80 AD. 
With a regular admission, you get to actually go on three different levels of the Coliseum. There are a lot of steps though, so if you are not mobile, you might want to reconsider going inside. So beware of that. David did a video on the Coliseum specifically a year ago, so I will put a link in the description as well as a link for the underground so that you can enjoy that. On the top level, they actually have a mini museum of sorts that you can look around at different artifacts and learn more about the Colosseum and the games that would have been inside the Colosseum. And like all tourist attractions, they got it right and they put a large gift shop at the exit so you can buy some different souvenirs on your way out. And another thing that's on the ex at the exit, but you don't need a ticket to do this, is our favorite water machine. In fact, this water machine was free water that was either frizzante, which is bubbly water, or club soda, whatever you want to call it. And they also had, that was on the right, and the one on the left gave cold natural water. So it was really good water, and it was located right outside the exit to the Colosseum. Okay, now we're headed to the Roman Forum. The Roman Forum is a place where all the most important people would have congregated and we're going to show you inside there to see the ruins. Your Colosseum ticket is timed, but your Roman foreign ticket is not. You get entrance with your Colosseum ticket that you can use anytime on that same day. You will also have to go through the metal detector on your way into the Roman Forum. We are currently at the Arch of Titus. We saw Constantine's arch a little bit ago and this one is right outside of the Roman Forum, so we're going to check that out. You can spend as much or as little time in the Roman Forum as you would like. I'm sure you can also purchase a tour, which would be very beneficial. We read a guidebook most of the time when we went and checked out the different points of interest. One of my kids' favorite places to visit was the Temple of Julius Caesar, which is actually the place that he was cremated. And people still leave coins as well as flowers on that spot. He was assassinated on the Ides of March in 44 BC, March 15th. There's a lot to see and learn about in the Roman Forum. We'll probably do a full-length video on that at some point. But for now, I just wanted to show you around so you could kind of catch a glimpse of what it's like. In the background you can see the back of the altar of the fatherland and that is one monument that I wish we had been able to see but we were not able to on our trips. Hopefully you'll be able to. You don't just have to enjoy the forum from down below, you can actually enjoy it from up above as well. We are headed up there. Here's another view from the front entrance of the forum of Palatine Hill. So you will have to go up several steps to get here but it's definitely worth the climb. See that building right there with the green doors? Those are original doors and see that place right there? It looks like it was bigger. It was. That's where the eternal flame was. This is part of one of the oldest buildings in Rome. It's built around 500 BC. one of the most photographed places in Rome. Look at that authentic Roman's road. So now we're going to leave the forum and we're going to head to the other side of the Colosseum, get back on the metro where we were. If we go two stops, we'll be at the Termini hub station, which is the main train station, and then we are going to get on the other line and take it three stops to Spagna because we are headed to the Spanish Steps. The Spanish Steps are one of Rome's most visited sites. They were built in 1725 to link the Bourbon Spanish Embassy and the Trinita de Monte Church. There are 135 steps and it is quite the workout to try and walk them. Rebecca had a sprained ankle when we went there so she had to walk it all in a boot. There is a rule, no loitering or sitting on the steps. You must keep moving because of the safety risk of somebody stumbling over you. As you see here, there were police officers present. In fact, they would walk up and down the steps and blow their whistle and tell you to move if you stopped. So that's definitely not something you want to do because you can actually get fined. Spanish Steps were featured in many movies, including most recently Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 2. 
I'm at the bottom of the steps, there's a beautiful fountain and the water is water that you can drink. In fact, all over Rome, you'll see these water fountains. Some are more ornate than others. And you can stop and get yourself some water as it comes from the fresh aqueduct. So now we are going to walk about 10 minutes down the road. You'll often see street performers and the streets are pretty busy. We are going to Trevi Fountain. That is another very famous site. It's been in many different movies and it is always super crowded. This is a view from when we were there in May. It's sometimes hard to get a good picture of everybody in your group, but we were able to do that. There's often people who are willing to take your picture or you can just do a selfie, which is what we normally like to do. Here we are with our friend Don, and we had a great time throwing coins in just like everybody else. It is rumored that if you throw a coin in the fountain, you will return to Rome. In fact, they get about a million euro of coins thrown into that fountain every year, and most of that money goes to charity. There is also an underground tour of the Trevi Fountain, so you can see where the water comes from. It's a super cool tour, and we were able to go and view it. In fact, we are bringing you along because I will put a link down in our description where David um, did a video taking you through Trevi Fountain Underground. Well, there's definitely a lot more you can do and see in Rome, but we're going to head back to Tor Venica, spend some time in the water, at the beach, and then we're going to get up bright and early tomorrow and go to Vatican City. So come back and watch our video and we'll show you what there is to see and do in that tiny little country inside Italy. Ciao! Water. Not bad.